Police in Greenville County are creeped out after several claims of a clown or clowns trying to lure children into the woods. These are the reports from Greenville, South Carolina. In a dark, wooded area, there is a man-made trail that leads to an abandoned hut near a pond. Local kids say that clowns live there and try to kidnap children who stray too far into the woods. It is unclear when these sightings first started, but it hit the news when residents of an apartment complex started to report sightings of sinister clowns trying to lure children into the woods with large amounts of money. Fleetwood Manor Apartments stands on the outskirts of these woods. So many residents witnessed these clowns that the apartment manager had to issue this letter. To the residents of Fleetwood Manor, there have been several conversations and a lot of complaints to the office regarding a clown or a person dressed in clown clothing taking children or trying to lure children into the woods. First and foremost, at Fleetwood Manor Apartments, children's safety is a top priority. At no time should a child be alone at night or walking in the roads or wooded areas at night. Also, if a person or persons are seen, you are to immediately call the police. Greenville County Police Department is aware of the situation and have been riding the property daily. Remember there is a 10pm curfew for the property, so to ensure your children's safety, please keep them in the house during night hours and make sure at all times children are supervised. Any more information that comes regarding this issue will be sent out to all residents. As you can see, the apartment manager and the police were taking these reports seriously and some of the sightings were very scary indeed. One woman told police that her son had come home terrified because a man wearing a clown costume with white face paint had tried to get him to come into the woods. The child led his mother to the area where he had seen the clown and she saw them too. Now there were multiple clowns hiding among the trees and flashing green laser lights. When she approached, they ran away into the darkness. Another Fleetwood Manor resident looked out of her window at 2.30am and saw a clown with a red blinking nose standing beneath a streetlight. He looked right at her and waved. She waved back. The clown didn't attempt to approach her. He just stood there, waving. Another report was of a child being chased home by a clown. Once inside, they heard someone knocking on the front door and the sound of chains being dragged around. Police investigated these stories and followed the trail that led to the house in the woods. They were unable to find any evidence that clowns were living in the building. So far, nobody has managed to capture any footage of these clowns. There are no security cameras in the area and the sightings usually happen at night when it is too dark to take a photograph. At one point, these photographs were given to the police and circulated online, claiming to be images of the Greenville clowns. It turns out that these are actually pictures of a performance art group called the Plymouth Clowns from New Hampshire. They had to issue a statement saying that they had never even set foot in South Carolina and that they do not intentionally scare people in this manner. It just goes to show how quickly misinformation can spread when people are frightened. I do think a lot of the Greenville sightings were genuine. The reports came from adults who saw the clowns clearly and even waved at them. They seem entirely believable and I don't see what they would gain from making up a story. However, I do think mass hysteria played a large part in the proliferation of these sightings. It would only take a few pranksters dressed as clowns to scare a couple of people, and then word of mouth and vivid imagination would do the rest. It reminds me of a similar scare that happened a few years ago in the area where I live. In 2013, a rumour started going around the Tyneside area in the northeast of England. The story usually went like this. A person would be home alone at night and would hear a tapping noise on their window. They would open the curtains to see a clown outside tapping on the window with a large knife. I don't know how this rumour started, but it all happened around Halloween, so most likely it began as some sort of trick or treat prank. I even remember a friend of mine telling me his daughter had come home from school and was terrified to go outside because there was a clown going around tapping on people's windows with a knife. The story evolved, social media helped it spread. Soon people were reporting a clown roaming the streets and slashing people with a butcher knife. This got so out of hand that Northumbria police had to issue a statement saying that there was no evidence of a clown attacking people or knocking on their windows. The whole thing was a hoax that got out of hand. 
Unless, of course, that's what they want us to think. The phenomena of a creepy clown frightening passers-by is now quite a common thing. Usually, it turns out to be some sort of viral marketing, a prank, or just somebody looking for attention. You can even hire an evil clown to stalk your children as a birthday surprise. I think Stephen King's It had a lot to do with the popularity of scary clowns today. A lot of people will have been terrified by Tim Curry's performance as Pennywise the Clown when they were kids. As a child, I remember staying up late and watching the TV in my room one night. I switched over and saw this scene, not knowing what I was watching. As soon as that clown popped out from behind the sheets, I changed channels as quickly as I could. I don't think I slept much that night. There is something psychologically disturbing about a clown when you take it out of context. A clown at a children's party making balloon animals is a fairly normal sight. You expect to see such a character there. But a clown stood alone on an empty street in the middle of the night. Your brain will tell you that this is all wrong. Suddenly, the costume appears sinister and out of place. His face obscured behind a layer of corpse white paint. The features drawn on in a parody of human expression. The blood red mouth pulled upwards in a false grimace. This was the sight that met Julia Graham as she passed Rose Hill Cemetery in Chicago. It was filmed at around 10 p.m., a time when the cemetery was closed off to the public. The clown was witnessed scaling the eight foot fence to gain access. Then it just turned around and waved slowly at people passing by before running off among the gravestones. The clown was never caught. It is not known whether he was just trying to frighten people or if he had a more creepy reason for being in the cemetery at night. The footage has an otherworldly feel to it, almost like a ghost video, but that's most probably down to the spotlights used to light up the graves. So despite a few pranksters and a number of mysterious sightings, there have actually been some genuine evil clowns. The most well-known is John Wayne Gacy. For those that don't know about him, John Wayne Gacy was a wealthy businessman who lived in Cook County, Illinois. Between 1972 and 78, Gacy lured at least 33 teenage boys back to his home. He overpowered them, tied them to a wooden plank, and then slowly murdered them. He took great pleasure in asphyxiating his victims. He liked to stuff their own underwear down their throats until they choked. This also served to muffle their screams as he sexually tortured them. He would partially drown them in his bathtub, then revive them for more excruciating treatment. Finally, he would perform what he called his rope trick. He would wrap a rope around their necks and slowly strangle them to death. Sometimes, they would take hours and hours to die. He would automatically orgasm as he killed them. He said that murder was the ultimate thrill. He would then bury their bodies in the crawl space beneath his home, pouring quicklime on the corpses to speed up their decomposition. What makes this even more sinister is that he was a well-known and respected member of the community. As well as being a successful businessman, he would also attend fundraisers and charity events as his alter ego, Pogo the Clown. This was a character that he had invented himself, making his own costume and applying his own makeup. Gacy said that dressing as Pogo allowed him to regress into a childlike state. He liked to visit dying children in hospital whilst dressed as Pogo. Professional clowns have noticed something unusual about the way Gacy applied his makeup. Most clowns will draw the mouth with rounded corners. This makes the smile more friendly and avoids scaring children. Gacy painted his smile with sharp, pointed corners, almost as if he wanted to intentionally frighten people. When police eventually uncovered the bodies beneath Gacy's house, some of the corpses were smeared with clown paint. Gacy had dressed as Pogo whilst he raped, tortured and murdered his victims. Another killer clown case is the unsolved murder of Marlene Warren. In May 1990, Marlene answered a knock at her door. Standing there was a clown holding a bunch of flowers and some balloons. The clown then pulled out a gun and shot her in the face at close range. Her son ran to his mother as she lay dying on the doorstep. He saw the clown get into a white car and drive away. The killer was never caught. Although police suspected her husband of masterminding the murder, he was never convicted due to insufficient evidence. 
What I find odd about this murder is the balloons. If the person is dressed as a clown just to murder someone on their doorstep, surely the makeup and costume would be a sufficient disguise. Perhaps the flowers were used to hide the gun, but why the balloons? Dragging a bunch of helium balloons around would only serve to hinder the clown's escape. It seems an unusual detail, and it gives me the creeps for some reason I can't quite put my finger on. So in conclusion, killer clowns really do exist, but if you see one in your local cemetery or hiding in the woods, chances are it's just a prankster looking to scare people. Or is it? I will leave you with one final news story, and this only happened a few days ago. In Columbus, Ohio, at around 6.15am, a 14 year old boy was walking to a bus stop when a man wearing a clown mask appeared as if out of nowhere. He was dressed entirely in black clothing, except for the mask, and he was wielding a large knife. The boy ran for his life, the clown chasing him down the street, brandishing the blade. Luckily, the boy escaped, but police weren't able to find the man in the clown mask. He is still out there. Somewhere. Thank you for watching this video. Until next time, goodbye.